G'day everyone and welcome back to Controlled Recoil. Here we're uh, gaining some height. It's a nice summer evening, absolutely beautiful. The wind's died down and we will be making camp with a bit of altitude tonight. Under the stars, no tents. It's meant to be perler weather and we are going to be in the zone for the morning. And what a great way to start a trip. the sun go down I reckon hard to beat a view like that cheers we'll catch you in the morning Beautiful sunrise going on. The billy isn't even bald in the background and we've already seen deer so can't complain with that. This here was camp last night. No tents underneath the stars. Decided to pack up camp. Stags moved off into the bush pretty early. So I'm gonna carry on around and see if we can get onto some pigs or some more velvetys. wasn't long before we spotted a group of these young stags. It was great to see. There was nothing there that we were interested in taking, but it was awesome to see the potential in the area. How far was that? Where are you looking? I'd say 200. Whenever you're ready, mate. Next one. Nice shooting, mate. Well done. Make <laughs> two, two, threes in the zone. Nice. Yep. Nice. So unfortunately Jack and Luke have to head out, um, they've got other commitments so I'm going to stay and continue the mission but it was good to have them for the first day at least, got a few feral goats on the, on the ground which was good, we've seen heaps of them so it's uh, really good to control a few numbers, a um, bit of meat there as well which is good and I'm going to continue and look for look for stags scouting the area we've seen I think it's nine so far which is fantastic alrighty we'll head round I'm gonna head round this way back into the wind get the wind right and scout my way around these sunny faces 
see what we can come up with. Well, the, uh, the weather's certainly changing. Um, big southerly blast coming through, so quite cold and definitely getting colder. So I'm um, losing a bit of visibility as well. Um, so it's getting it's getting pretty foggy. It's racing through the saddle over in front of me here. Yeah, it's actually cooling down enough now that I hopefully will be able to take something and get get some um, meat out and make it keep. It was a real hot day yesterday, you just wouldn't have shot anything yesterday, it was just too hot to, to get the meat and recover it, but yeah, I think at the moment, I think it, yeah, good opportunity to fill the freezer I think, so we'll go around and I'll see if I can take a, a young yearling or something like that. That right there, that right there is how fast the weather changes. Just got down into the lower country now and just broke below that fog uh, barrier which has actually lifted quite a bit. Um, this wind seems to be moving it quite fast. But yeah, got onto these two yearlings. So I'm just double checking that they are yearlings and, and they're not going to have a fawn in tow. And then I might look to taking the shot and getting some meat. Well, that went really well. Man, it is just freezing now. It would be really good to keep that meat chilled though. Perfect opportunity. You don't often get these ones during summer, so... Yeah, we'll head down and find her and yeah. Perfect. Always a great one. Straight down. Little 2 do 3 doing the job. So, yeah, it was about, I think about 150 metres, so base of the neck, no meat wastage, perfect, leave the pack here I think and um, we'll get down there and pack it out, maybe over to here and so there you have it, she just got hit just above that bank there, straight down, rolled down, I've just turned her over now, perfect base of the neck shot right there, no problem, it's not always the shot to take but if you're confident and you're close enough that you're going to be bang on, it's uh, it's a really good option. Drop them straight away, and um, yeah, basically just means there's no meat wastage. Really, you might get a wee bit of bruising around your back, stake up high, but um, you still get all your shoulder and stuff like that. So, really, really good option if you if you know you're on point 
and um, yeah, if it's if it's a longer shot or a bigger animal and other things like that, um, the good old shoulder shot's the way to go. But light little accurate gun like a 223 is just perfect for that sort of shooting. So and it was a very very easy distance just up there on the ridge line. So super happy with that. I'll be able to get that whole animal out, um, especially with the shoulders not being touched. That I'll just cut the whole thing out and um, yeah, utilize everything. Perfect. Excellent result, it's been a cracking day, awesome overnight mission, there's been some stunning views, and yeah, it's good to see nine stags as well, that's sort of what we're up there doing, scouting around for stags, but um, yeah, quite a few deer scenes, so perfect opportunity now the weather's cooled down to, yeah, fill the freezer, so awesome. Almost there, getting there. If anyone's interested in the easiest way to carry out a deer, this here, turning them into a backpack, is a fantastic way of doing things. So, I've already done it obviously, but I can show you the rough idea. So, you make an incision in the, the back leg, behind the back tendon. Don't make that incision too big, because it's got to lock this leg. So just make it enough to get the foot through, but that's, that's all. And then here, the key here, this is really important, on the knee, you want to get the flat joint, which is actually the bottom joint, not the middle one that's like a knuckle. Get the one that goes flat like that, and there's be careful when you make your incision that you don't cut this tendon that runs down the leg. And what you do is you cut them behind this tendon, and then that there threads through, and you'll see you can lock it so it doesn't pull through, and that's how you make your backpack. And... Um, you can take the weight off your shoulders if you leave these hocks on. You can press down on them when it's on your back and it'll actually help you adjust the animal and take the weight off your shoulders. A bit like the bottom strap on a backpack. It also makes it easier when you're carrying it out to hold your rifle across these two legs. And it's just something to rest your rifle on. So, yeah, a little tip there for anyone that's wanting to know. Sorry, I know it's a bit gory, but it's the reality of hunting. That's... Uh, you gotta, you know, utilize the meat and get it out and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, main things to take away from it. Flat knuckle, which is the lowest one. And uh, don't cut too big an incision in the back leg, just enough to get that through. And you can adjust the length of your straps by how far you cut down this tendon. Watch your knuckles when you're doing it too. But anyway, something interesting. I'm almost at the top. Then I'm gonna have to work out the logistics of getting that whole thing back in my backpack. But that's fine. It's not too big a deer, actually. It's just a yearling, so should be good. But I appreciate you tuning in, and we'll uh, catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.